Oh, first, uh, just coming out, I, I'd like to talk a little, you know, I'd just like to ask Morgan, I mean, uh, when did you first start cleaning fish? Probably when I was about 14 or 15, and um, my dad finally let me try a program after we went, um, after we went and got used is when I started uh, scaling and uh, filleting brim. All right. Well, I, I was probably about 12. Um, I, I was fishing a lot with an older gentleman that uh, my dad and I fished with all the time, and I got to watching him uh, fillet crappie. Uh, first, the first time I'd ever seen anybody use an electric knife on fish, and I kind of got interested about that, and he decided he'd teach me, you know, take a little workload off. Yeah. And uh, kind of uh, throughout the years, you know, through fishing with my boat, uh, techniques and different things. Uh, spent a lot of time in the catfish business, cleaned, cleaned a few fish there. And, uh, you know, uh, dad always just kind of left me with it once I was about 13 <laughs> or 14 years old. Sometimes it's been a little harder for me to go out fishing yeah. <laughs> with him from time to time. But we're going to talk about the tools of the trade. Yep. Hey, you know, guys, this is a two-part series. We've got cleaning tonight, and the next month is the 15th, right? Next month we're going to do a uh, series. We have several different dishes. To several fish. So got this part. This is you know how how we get to the cleaning until until we get this part done. We we got to we got to uh, we can't clean till so. Oh, okay, October so oh, my bad. It was the twelve. Sorry, I thought I looked at the calendar. <laughs> All right, take two minutes and look at our table here. Well, I should mention our other events. Hey, guys, we got a huge fishing event going on this weekend. Now, Arkansas Game and Fish has 14 different locations that we're having uh, events in. And there are a few personnel across the state. I'm going to be in Monticello. I'll be in Greenbrier at Matthews Park. And we're going to have lots of lots of our personnel out. Uh, we're going to have some have a good time we're stocking the ponds up we're gonna oh, yeah. we're gonna catch a bunch of fish it's a nice family event it's not just a kid it's not a kids only event this is for families right and you can find all those locations on our website at the outdoor skills network Okay, guys. Tonight, one of the, one of the one of the challenges we face tonight is we've had a weather front come in. Location. We're not on why We're trying to run on a hot spot. Yeah. So uh, please bear with us. We're going to have probably more technical difficulties than usual. But we're uh, going to try our best, and we we hope you enjoy it. Right. All right. Let's get started. Let's start talking about. I'm going to uh, move up here to the table and start talking about a few of the tools of the trade. Uh, if we can get our camera focused down here on the table. Um, you know, one of the things about cleaning fish, there's a number of different ways to doing it. I love to fillet fish. I'm kind of a, a electric fillet knife guy. Uh, you can get those rechargeable as well. Uh, if you don't, that way, if you don't have access to electricity, uh, if you're doing manual fillet knives, they come in different, uh, several different uh, shapes and sizes and brands. Uh, this is one of your smaller knives. This is knife made by Rapala, and it's great. I, I have one of these that I use just for cleaning trout. I typically don't use it as a fillet knife. If you use some of your uh, bigger fish, you want a longer blade, you can get those as well for your electric. Now, if you're skinning fish, uh, there's a couple of different uh, varieties of fish skinners out there. If you notice the heads on these are quite different. I prefer this type versus this type uh, for scaling fish. They make the commercial fish scalers. And uh, you can also just use a spoon from, from the kitchen drawer. Uh, I actually prefer a spoon. I usually don't use a, a scaler, but Morgan's gonna be doing most of our scaling tonight and she prefers a scaler. Uh, and if you're staking fish after you skin them, it's nice to have a butcher knife or if you have bigger fish, uh, cleavers are coming really, really handy. I don't have one of those on hand. Now, we're gonna use all these knives. A knife sharpener is a must. This is just a very simple uh, pull through type knife sharpener. You just set it on the table. 
but everything works better if you've got a better edge. There's also electric sharpeners. Uh, there's one called Power Hone. There's several different uh, knife sharpeners out there on the market, but uh, try, and, try and keep your knife sharp. It, it makes it work so much easier on your fish. All right, well, I'm gonna clear some of this away and we're gonna get started. Another thing, it's good to have a cutting board. Now, my fish board is a two by 12. We're gonna get, a, I'm gonna get a few items out of the way before I get started. Make sure this knife's in good condition. All right, the first fish up tonight, I'm gonna get a catfish. This is fine. We're gonna get a catfish and we're gonna skin this guy. I'm also gonna fillet another one in a minute, so I'm gonna keep this fillet knife handy. All right, now. All right, if you'll notice on my fish board here, I got a screw embedded in here. A lot of people will hang these from a hook or I've seen people put nails in them, nail them to a tree. Uh, it's just kind of what people get used to and how they're taught. I just like to have this through here or have it where I can hang it up and you'll just take that gill, flap, open it up. That way you've got good control over your fish. You hold down on that head and whatever kind of pressure I give, I can just lean my hip into that board and I've got the fish where he's good and secure and he can't get away from me. Okay, well, before we get started, we're gonna make a few cuts and we're gonna go just in front of the dorsal fin. I like to, you can go a little farther forward than this. I, I just like to go right here because there's not a whole lot and we want to get just barely through the skin. Okay. I'm just gonna open that up. I'm gonna go slow. I don't get in any big hurry. Come right down here. We're just gonna make these cuts. You don't wanna get too deep, then you get into the meat and when you start to skin, it will actually tear away at the meat. And that's the part crime sake. So we're just gonna get in there just as easily as we can. All right, he scored pretty well all the way around. All right, now back again, like we talked about, open gill up, get him where he's nice and secure. Okay, we we'll get those sharp objects out of the way. We'll make sure my board is secure. We we'll get in here with our fish skinner. Just barely get a little that skin. We'll start to peel a little bit. Sometimes fish hold on to this stuff pretty good, so it takes a little bit of pressure. But I like to go down about midway on the dorsal fin and then stop. It's a little harder working with the camera guys because I can't turn and move the fish exactly the way I want it. But, so bear with me just a little. I got it. There we go. All right. Now, once you get him started pretty well on both sides, on a smaller fish, you can usually just give it one nice tug and it come down. I like to work it back and forth on either side of the fish to make sure we get all of it and it comes off smooth. And once it starts moving, you can tell. All right. Always handy. Keep you, keep you a receptacle handy for all of your things you're not going to want to eat for heads and guts and tails and all those things. Entrails. Let's be more proper. All right. We got him skinned all the way down to the tail. And sometimes that holds on to the skinner pretty well. All right. So let's take our fish here. We'll roll them over and look. All right. I kind of like to take my knife, go in right here, cut right below these fins. There's a little, there's a little plate there. Cut him right back to there. That leaves his entrails open. We'll just slowly go on and finish that cut and that meat. Now, Guys, we've got several different pieces of this fish we're gonna get into right now when we start getting into this cavity. 
but we're gonna roll him over a couple times. I'm not I'm not getting in any hurry. Okay. Now I'm gonna reach over. It's handy to have your bigger knife when you get down to the spine. Just give it a little pop. Might want to do it from the other side. Be conscious of where you're. One thing I'm having to do right now, since I'm trying to keep this for the cameras, be conscious of where that screw is on that board. All right, I've got it scored pretty well. That spine's popped. A little bit holding on here. Go back to my smaller knife. All right. I'm going to pull loose what I can here. Discard that head in our bucket. All right. Where we're sitting here, we want to go in through the vent. Cut down here. Again, here's where your fish scanner is really come in handy. You can grab a hold of those entrails. Give them a nice little tug. Make sure you get the last of that out. All right. Like I said, we're not getting any big hurry tonight. Well, we can show show you that. All right. Now, depending on what you're doing with this fish, you may want to cut this fin out. You may want to leave it. That's a personal preference you all right we got all this handled hey guys still when you got this watch out for this dorsal spine it can still get you so you can take your skinner once we get to this point i'm going to get rid of that guy all right now we're going to step to the side and keep that guy opened up my sink on my cleaning table is not agreeing with me this week, so. Now, when you're doing this, be careful. You've got a few ribs usually protruding through, and you don't want to get stuck. All right. All right, let's go on and rinse the rest of that guy off. All right, now come back here. I'll lay this guy down here nice and neat. We're gonna rinse off our board after we. Guys, if you have several fish to clean, I recommend getting them all to this stage, then cleaning up your board, and then going through and getting your uh, your final cuts of your meat. All right. Well, since we've got him laid out here, you can remove this fin, take your knife, score down either side. Because there are some bones there. And we just take our skinner. You know, main thing about this is you want to take, take good care of it. Don't get in a big rush until you're a little bit more proficient at it. All right. Now we've got a whole fish. There's different ways. I left a little skin on this tail. If you like it all the way down to the tail section. I'm going to pull that off. But there's several ways we can cut this guy up. Uh, some people fry fish a little smaller than this hole. Some people like to leave the tails on the tail section. So today, we're going to leave the tail on the tail section. And I say just go kind of go through. And you kind of have to pick your thickness on what you decide is going to be the right piece of fish for you. I like to cut down through the meat. Give it a little smack. Okay, now we go to cut our next steak. 
I'll probably make that here. And as your fish section get bigger and bigger, you want those steaks to get just a little thinner. That way you uh, they'll cook out about the same rate. But I like catfish steaks. I mean, for those of you who are more filet oriented, that's great. Uh, this is kind of like a it's kind of like a bone in steak. It's going to hold a little bit more moisture uh, when you cook it. And I I am kind of a catfish steak guy. Unfortunately, in today's world, almost all restaurants serve fillets. Yeah, I'd hard never to find heard steaks, steaks these days. Until uh, we started talking about how we were going to do this, Mark and um, JJ said, "Well, why don't we show them how to do steaks?" And I was like, "Steaks, like beef steaks." <laughs> What? Like, no, catfish steaks. Yeah. Well, I mean, this I is the way I grew up. Now, when, guys, when you get down to the end cut, uh, it's hard to make it pretty. It really is. It's hard to make that last guy pretty. Uh, in my house, that's a bad piece of fish. Uh, <laughs> my boys might avoid it. But, uh, and that's, and it's your preference whether you want to keep the tail section or not. Uh, some folks like to leave them on there, others don't. And that is how we skin and steak a channel cat. All right. Well, there's one way to go. Ready now, for the next one? I am. I've got, we got a little housekeeping here. Guys, if you'll bear with me for a moment, I'm going to think Morgan's got a bag for me to put this fish in so, because, well, I'm going to eat it later. Uh, let's face it. So she's going to get that. And I'll start talking to you about filleting uh, while we're waiting and we and we get this picked up. Back up to my spot again. Okay, guys, we did the did the staking of the fish. And I know just seeing one real quick like that, I tried to go through it slow. Um, it, it takes a little practice. Uh, skinning one especially, there's some challenges there. Um, but just make sure that you've got good control over your fish, whether it's hanging up from a, from a good stable hook, or if you've got a, a screw and a board like this, that's the best thing to do is maintain good control of that fish when you're doing that. All right, when we start talking about fillets, ooh, that'd be good. When we start talking about fillets, I, with catfish, I love an electric fillet knife. So we're going to get our board cleaned up here. Now there are fillet boards out there that you can get that have a pretty little clamp that go on their fish's tail. And hey, what, however, however you need to do it, I personally just hold them in my hand. So that's the way we're going to show you how to do it tonight. Oh, thank you, Morgan. All right, I got another little channel cat here. Um, what we're going to try and do, I'm going to get my electric fillet knife. Now, another thing, when you're cleaning fish, you're cleaning them uh, several different ways. Anything you don't need, real handy. Nice to have a good clean work area. Now, Mark, I got a question. Okay. Would you want to wipe the slime off that fish before you fillet it? I wouldn't. I like them slide on the table. Okay. And I'll show you why in a minute. All right. Now, this is going to require a little, little bit more movement than our other fish because of how I do this. All right, again, our fillet is going to run back up through this way. I'm not real greedy. I don't get up in here and get a whole lot of this meat. I kind of go from about the front of the dorsal fin down to these fins right here. Now, one of the best things about having an electric knife is you can pulse it. And by pulsing it, you can get your depth right where you want it. And I'm going to cut through a few ribs here. But if you'll pulse that knife and get it down there where you can start to feel where the spine is and get that knife planed out. One of the things, you know, there's, there's commercially made fish fillet knives and there's other types of electric knives. One of the things you want to look for in that is make sure your blade's good and flexible. If your blade flexes really well, That'll help you get down there on that spine and stay down there so you get all the meat that you can. Now, once you start going, I suggest pulse that knife 
and leave the knife stationary and give the fish a little tug. That's why I want him sliding. Okay. So he'll slide across that table. If you notice the knife isn't moving, but it's it's going through that fish pretty well. And then we get over here. This is kind of like playing Texas Hold'em, guys. We go for the flop. Okay. And once we flop, we're going right back in. And we're going to get all the way down there by the skin. That's another thing. You want you you want something up above your table like this board so you can get that knife all the way down and maintain that low, low feel with that knife. See, I left a little on that one. I didn't stay low enough. Hey, guys, I screw up a time or two. There's a little meat left on there, but that's still a good filet. All right, there's one side. We're going to roll it over, and we're going to do it again. Again, I'm going in here at the front of the dorsal fin, cutting back toward here. There, there is a little bit more meat to be had. I'm just not that greedy. But if you if if you prefer that, you go right ahead. There's no 100% right way of doing things. This one's just my way. All right, again, once we've got that knife pulsed a few times, and we get it planed out, pull down. Now, I always, I always try and move that skin out of the way when I do that flop on that second side so we can, again, be as flat as possible. See how I pull that fish through there? Now, see, that was a much better side. There was not nearly as much left on there. And there we go. All right, now I'm going to get rid of our head and, head and spine here. Okay, now we're not done yet. When we go through it, when we go up there, we end up cutting through the ribs a little. And we want to make sure we remove those. I like a manual knife for that a little bit, a little easier to get in there. A good sharp manual knife. All right, once that's cut out, I like to run my fingers through, make sure there's not any other bones in there. All right. That one's good. Now we get our other filet here. Ooh, I didn't make that one a little thin. First one of the day, guys. All right, get that cut out. Now again, we're gonna take our filets over to our high-tech washing sink. I'm gonna try not to spray the camera. Again, you want to get as much of that blood off there, get it as clean as possible, okay? You know, one thing, Morgan, we really hadn't talked about that we need to address before the evening's over. I don't want to do it right now because we've got more fish to clean. Yeah. But it's storage. Oh, yeah. And how we're going to put these guys up. Oh, we're mixing fillets and steaks. I don't do that typically at home, but we're only cleaning a couple of fish tonight. So, all right. There's our cat here. What's next on the agenda? I think I'm going to show how to scale a brim. Okay. Well, I'm going to let me clean up the area a little bit here. All right. And you can start talking about maybe your tools of the trade. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get one out here. All right. Okay. Um, on some of your larger catfish, you will run across some red meat. Uh, it's typically on the outside, closer to the closer to the skin area, and I always try and cut that loose. Uh, it's typically on bigger fish. On those smaller fish, I don't worry about anything. Uh, on the bigger fish, when you start getting into red meat, or if they have that big red vein that runs along their lateral line, we'll cut that out. Those are using a lot larger fillets. Uh, on those smaller guys, you really don't have to worry about that as much. Does that answer the question? Okay, okay. All right, well, uh, if you need any assistance, I'm gonna kind of build. I'm gonna go ahead and get my tools here, get that going. Um, I'm learned how to do this for my uh, grandpa Larry, Larry Nicholson. Uh, he loves to uh, catch brim. 
Oh. Uh, he's no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, he loves to catch brim and um, he'll cut the heads off, scale them, and he'll fry them whole uh, with a whole cavity. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that, how my uh, grandpa Larry taught me, and uh, we'll go step by step. So I've got my fish scaler here. And like Mark mentioned before, you can just use a regular tablespoon. Um, it works just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, my brim here and I'm just going to start being a little bit of abrupt with it. See that scales, they're just sliding right off. And since we're cutting the head off, I mean, you can go all the way to the top. The very end up here and on the belly. Sometimes you don't. All right, there's one side. I'll go ahead and get that other side going. And scales are just sliding right off. It does kind of make a mess every once in a while. That's all right. All right so now I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of rinse or kind of slide these off a little bit. Wipe my hands off. And first, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the head off because that'll make it a little bit easier to cut the entrails out. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take the brim and we're going to go right behind this uh, fin right here. Just start making a cut. Uh, no, the scaler won't cut you. It's not very sharp. Um, it's just um, really abrasive right here. And it, it's just to make friction and make those scales slide right off. Uh, so the scaler, no, it's not sharp. The only thing that's sharp is these knives. <laughs> so you want to make sure you're, uh, you don't want to cut yourself when you're using these. Okay. Almost got him here. Pop right there, and then there's the head, throw it away, and then we'll take our knife and go through the vent, anal vent right here. If I can get it, there we go. We will pull these out. And then now we'll take it over here to our handy dandy sink that we've got. Okay. We'll just wash the scales off and then we'll wash the inside. Right, there you go. You got your uh, scaled brim ready to be breaded and fried and put it on the table. I'll have one bag of fish. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clean my station off real quick because I think I'm going to do a trout next. So, Morgan, why would you decide to whole fry fish over fillet? You no, know, JJ, I don't know. It's a uh, smaller fish. Um, it's preference, too. Um, my grandpa, he really likes it. Um, and the plus brim is really good. It's really good fish to eat. So he really likes that. I prefer filleting them. A lot of people like to fillet them. Okay. Yeah, the fins are good. I like chomping on the fins. All right, so the next fish I'm going to do is a trout. I'm just going to show you how to, uh, to get it um, and take the entrails out and get it ready for um, to cook on a stove top or in the oven. So here we've got some rainbow trout. 
And I'm going to use this little uh, fillet knife um, that Mark talked about before. Um, he said it's, you know, it's pretty good one to use on trout. And I always use this one when I'm uh, about to work on a trout. It's, it's, my hands are small and it fits really good in my hand. And it just really glides through that, that trout. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take the, the tip of my uh, knife here. I want to stick it in that anal vent um, on the trout. And I'm going to point up and just glide it on up here. Sometimes it's smooth like butter, sometimes it'll give you a little trouble. I missed a spot right here between these two fins, that's okay. All right, we'll just open that on up there. So now we've got that open. And I went all the way up to um, his, where the gill flap starts. And now we're going to start making cuts to take the entrails out. Should be able to give it a nice little tug. It'll come out just like that. One thing that these, uh, these trout have is a, a uh, bloodline that goes uh, down the back of their spine right here and you want to cut that out. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take my um, my knife here and I'm just going to uh, just pretty much cut that membrane open so right score it and uh, it when you wash it it'll just fall right out. But another thing before we get started and do that is I'm going to cut the gills out. I do that by, you can see the gills right here, and they're connected to this um, right here, so you're going to have to make a cut to separate those, and then it'll come right out. Said that. <laughs> Live TV, folks. Yeah. Just trying. Always works better in a rehearsal, doesn't it? All right. So now I got that out. Throw that in a trash can. Wipe my hands off. And then we'll come over here and we'll wash that that blood back. Sometimes you may have to, to, to work it kind of like what I'm doing to get it out. When they've been on ice for a little while, it, it's a little bit harder for it to come on out. When it's fresh, it, it'll just fall right out. But sometimes you may have to take your fingers and work it, work it out of there. And there you go. You've got your trout ready to be wrapped in aluminum foil, add some seasoning, and put them in the oven. Yeah, we're not going to mix that with the other fish. I'm going to go ahead and wash this off real quick for Mark. Do bass? Well, I'm going to, but I wanted to talk about something first. Okay. You know, I didn't really think about it earlier, but it's something that's really important that we hadn't mentioned is cleaning fish when it's hot. Uh, cleaning fish when it's hot outside, guys, there's not enough ice uh, that you can use. I like to use a bucket full of water that has a bag or so of ice in it to keep my fillets in. If you don't, they get kind of grainy. 
uh, if when you do, those things will kind of tighten up. They get real firm, and uh, I prefer that with my fish fillets. Uh, if they get too hot, you get spoilage pretty quick. Uh, so it's one of those things, just a little bit of a little bit of a safety tip, and just uh, things are always better when they're fresher. Uh, okay. So, oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. All right, now this guy's been on ice for a little while. He's a little on the stiff side, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna tackle this guy with a manual fillet knife. A little large mouth here. Um, so since we're gonna use the manual and we got a bigger fish, we're going with a bigger knife. All right, all right. Again, always get in there behind that pectoral fin. We're just going to start going down. The main thing here is you've got to control that pressure and not go through that spine. It's not, it's a little different than running that electric knife. Uh, I don't feel like you have as much control with a manual. And as we go through, you're going to hear, I'm going to go slow. You hear breaking through the ribs. We're just going to do one at a time, no rush. Just keep that downward pressure, keep that knife. But you're kind of pulsing it like that electric knife. Well, I, I guess you, yeah, I guess that's a. And on this, I'll kind of hold the fish. I won't drag the fish like I do with the uh, electric knife. Every now and then you feel yourself getting a little too close to the spine. Now you got two options here. And I'm just going to show you, show you one of them that I didn't show you otherwise. I'm going to cut that loose. And I'm going to use my fish scanners to hold this later so we're just show you a little different way to do that we're going to roll him over do the other side fish scanners are handy guys if you're even when you're filleting sometimes it's hard to hold on to those fillets um so i'm going to show you how you can use those fish scanners in case you have a mishap and go through your tail section mm, that rib's a little tougher now you know why is this side tougher now, before I had the heavier part, the spine of my knife that had a lot more control on over there. Now I'm truly left-handed. If I could, if I was ambidextrous and get right-handed and get down It'd in there, right. But since it's it's a little tougher getting through those ribs when you're on the other side, because for that for that reason. Oh, uh, might be getting a little too close to the spine. Who knows? Hey. We're live, guys. I can screw up pretty good when it's live. <laughs> All right. Look like we left. The, we we didn't get in the spine. Okay. All right. Let's get uh, Mr. Bass over here out of the way. I'm gonna get my hands cleaned off and grab my scanner. <laughs> All right. This works really well. I've got a friend of mine. This is the only way he fillets catfish. It's a little different way. And again, you get to moving that skin back and forth. Oh. Found my, found my nail over there. All right. Slide it right off there. But that's just another way you can do it. Whip it around here. Good pinch. And it, the hardest thing, guys, is getting that knife down good and parallel to the table. And that's, again, I can't stress the importance of having a board on top of the table that way you can keep that knife nice and low because there's nothing more frustrating than trying to cut something on a flat table and uh your knife keep bumping the table and you and it makes you leave more meat on your skin now mark is that blade flexible like your um oh yeah. Knife would be? oh yeah this is a it's pretty pretty flexible all right again now we're back in here we've got our fillet and we've got to cut out our rib section I prefer to have two knives for this and have a, a little shorter knife because once you get out this, this is a nine inch blade. Uh, it's harder to control than a shorter blade would be. All right, now I'm gonna flip this guy over and look. Now you, you can cut this fillet up into two sections or three. There's not a whole lot of red in here on this line, but you can. Go through. I stepped in the water. It's cold. And cut that out of there. 
There's that filet. Man, I'm getting hungry just looking at this. <laughs> uh, you can eat all this bass you want. I mean, I, I will eat bass. I'm not a I'm not a catfish and crappie purist, but I'm not either. <laughs> I yeah, like bluegill tacos. Yes, Blakey they do. Meat. Hey, those those bass poor boys we made yes, were awfully they were good. Really good. Oh, hey, Morgan, why don't you tell them where they can find that recipe? And again, check through your filet. Feel a little bit. I just pulled the bone out. There's a tiny bone right there. Yeah, and you can find those recipes that Mark just mentioned. Um, the I think we did white bass. We did white bass? Yes. Poor boy. You can find that on the Virtual Nature Center. Um, we made a video on that, on how to do that. And we also did uh, two different recipes on trout as well. You know, and there's one thing we always tell people. Guys, if you want to oh, get in, the link is in the chat for those. Right. And guys, if you want to get involved in this, go out there and get your fishing license. Definitely. <laughs> we always tell people, have that fishing license. 1050 buys you a heck of a lot of fun in this state. Yep, lasts a year. And I'm gonna just cut that out. Feel again. I think I got all the bones. All right. Down here to this high tech sink again. I think y'all just wanted to hear me grunt and groan today. <laughs> Bending over. All right. Guys, this is really good quality control on your fish. Check through, get all the little bumps and all the stuff out before you put it in the freezer. It makes it easier on you when you're ready to cook later. That's got a little something in that filet. I'm gonna, some of that stuff you can get out with your fingers. Some of it you need to get the knife again. I don't want this fish has got- JJ's going got the handy dandy bag open for you there. Woo! Wrong way. All right. Awesome. And that's our bass. But we've, you know, we've done a little manual filet. We've done some uh, okay. electric. What else, what else can we do today, Morgan? What else you got planned for uh, everybody? I think I'm going to do uh, electric filet, crappie. And there I've we also, go. Also got a brand that I am going to, uh, to do as well. Oh, oh you're going to one-up me, aren't you? You're going to try and do more fish than I did today. All right. Did you say right? What? <laughs> JK said I got five minutes. Five, five minutes. Five oh, minutes. That sounds like a one fish to me. Yep. I've got this beautiful black crappie. He doesn't look the true color, but this is black crappie. And I'm going to use Mark's handy dandy playing out there. And I'm left-handed, too. <laughs> we got a lot of left-handers here. At, uh... Sorry, guys, if you wanted to see a right-handed only video, we're not your crew. Hey, that's right. We look right-handed on camera. That's right. So what I'm going to do here I'm going to pull back this pectoral fan. I'm going to go in here. You know what? Oh, you're going to start on the hard side? I'm going to start on the easy side. And I'm going to go in at an angle here. I'm just kind of pull this like Mark did before. Um, all right, that's my knife. So I'm gonna tell you, get that tip on past on past the fish up here. Okay. Yeah, okay. it'll cut better there. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's my knife. I know these things. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We're getting in there now. All right. And you're gonna keep like Mark did with the catfish. You're gonna keep it on that spine. Just kind of pulse it. All the way down there to the tail. Flip it. Little flop. Little for the flop. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be a sink man this time. I'm a sink man. I'm gonna cut a little bit of the fan here. I'll come out a little bit. Yeah, Since we don't have video, so let's just go to Q and A. 
right, so let's just start a QA. and a If anybody has any questions, please put those yeah. in the chat, and uh, we will be happy to answer those for you. Where's our bag man go? Yeah, where's my bag man? Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Oh, video is back. back. Tell me video is back. Okay. okay. Awesome. Well, uh, any fish you shouldn't eat? Uh, bow pen. <laughs> I, they, now I know people that eat those. Okay. Um, a lot of people eat dar, a lot of people eat buffalo, carp. Uh, I don't, I'm not aware of any. Uh, anything on the endangered list? And guys, watch in your uh, lakes. There are different uh, warnings out there for mercury levels or other chemicals and things of that nature. Uh, there, there are some things that are restricted to how often uh, some of those fish can be consumed. And just remember the fact that the larger the fish is, the longer it's been exposed to those and probably the higher the mercury levels will be. Like if you get a really old catfish out of a lake that is known for having mercury content, it's probably gonna have a little bit more mercury in that fish. Uh, Personally, I don't let a lot of that scare me. Um, <laughs> I just like fish. Yeah. But uh, we have any other questions? A lot of those things are posted on the individual like listings, either on our website or in the fishing, uh, fishing guidebook. Guide that's a better question because I can't tell you. Uh, maybe uh, one, that would be a better question for one of our uh, field biologists uh, than for uh, fishing education, maybe. Yeah. Because uh, some of some of the some of the uh, lakes have been in runoff situations. Other have, others have not. Uh, it's actually occurring in the environment. Just some areas have higher levels. Is my head in the? Yeah. <laughs> I, it, I feel like that camera's looking me right at you. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Hey, guys, we know we've had some technical difficulties tonight. We appreciate you yeah, bearing with you us. Um, we, like I said, we had to move. We had to punt right there at the end. We had to uh, go from a really nice picturesque location out behind our office to uh, over here behind the shop where the wind was uh, not, a, not being oh, ferocious. Nice and, of course, you know how things are. As soon as we moved over here and we started, the wind stopped. Mm -hmm. but it looked like we had a front coming in we could get some weather uh we didn't we're glad we were able to uh continue our broadcast and do all this outside and not have to duck and run uh for pop-up shower we thought that was going to get us okay guys don't forget about our fishing events this yeah. weekend uh multiple locations around the state we've got 14 that are going to have game and fish personnel there's several other derbies that'll be listed uh under the under the fishing derby uh yeah oh, what skills, do you call it outdoor skills network. <laughs> outdoor skills yeah. network how long will i try and eat mine less than a year um yeah when when we're when we're putting away fish guys i i take mine pack them in water a lot of people will use um milk jugs they put their fillets in there until they get to the top where they've kind of where they where they've cut the side, fill the rest up with water. It's got a nice handle on it, and they stand up great in the freezer. I've seen my dad uh, put fillets in a bowl, fill it with water, and stick it in the fridge overnight, and let it sit, and kind of let those fillets soak in the water. And then he'll take them and put them in a ziploc bag, and then we'll we'll put them in our freezer okay. with water. With water, yeah. We don't want to we don't want to dry freeze fish. We like to we like to have that. I, when I'm zipping up the top of my Ziploc bags, there's there's water coming out on the counter. You want that bag completely full, that because they're real real likely to get freezer burn, freezer burn, and that ruins their whole bag of fish. Should you fillet it first and then freeze it, or freeze the whole fish and thaw it before it? Like I always clean mine first. Yeah. Always clean mine and put it and up if first. You're, like if, when I did the whole brim, um, you can actually store that just like that. Um, like we, we talked about, like soaking it in the water, putting it in that Ziploc bag with water. I mean, it stores the same way as a filet would. 
it's just your preference but of course you want to clean that before you you store it and i'll tell you fillets store store really really well in plastic bags if you're using a lot of fish that that, that are like your whole fryers like your pan fish yes. or if you're doing some whole catfish or things like that those half gallon milk jugs work great cut them at the top so you can open it up keep that handle on there that way the bones don't poke through the bag and you don't end up with a mess in your freezer or or if you're thawing them out have a mess in your refrigerator um because okay. i like to thaw my stuff out in the refrigerator why do you soak fish and water overnight just to keep them keep them moist um and the blood keep bleeding <laughs> out because even after you rinse it, there's still going to be a little bit of blood on that fillet. And when you put it in that water in that bowl or in the milk jug and let it soak, it's going to keep bleeding out. Right. And then in the next day it'll be. And some fish are better if you soak them a day or so. Yeah. Uh, like a white bass is a little stronger flavor to it to me. I like to soak those a day. Uh, catfish, uh, if they're farm raised, I'm pretty well going to buy them right then. If I catch them off the river, um, well, I, I might let them soak for a day. So it just depends. It depends on what you got. Um, a lot of times you're, um, you know, if any of you guys are, are, are hunters, I mean, a lot of you soak meat, make it yeah, where it's not as gamey. I soak, Fish kind of works the same water, way. Um, and salt water. And um, I'll soak turkey meat and salt water too. Mm -hmm. Brian. Any other questions? Okay. We've talked about our events. Mm -hmm. Now, don't forget next month we're going to cook some yeah. fish. Oh, yeah. We're going to do several dishes. I don't know who all we're going to have on our staff that's involved with this because there's probably going to be a little a little battle just to figure out who gets to come up and sh you know show off what they want to cook. Cooking skills. <laughs> um, you know, guys, we love catching these things. Cleaning them's part of it, but we love cooking them and eating them. That's part of just being in the outdoors and and bringing people closer together. Yeah is around the table uh, and enjoying these things that we while we were catching them and, and in the consumption but we like to thank everybody yes. for tuning in I, I like i said we apologize again for our technical difficulties we a little bit out of our control without without y'all so we appreciate everybody viewing in and um and um you know buying that fishing license and participating in our events we really appreciate it <laughs> any more questions sir all right. Well, we're going to sign off. We appreciate you once again for viewing in. And don't forget, October 12th, we're cooking. Right. Big cook off. And this weekend. And this weekend, we're fishing. We're fishing. Okay, yeah,